What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. The past couple weeks have been extremely busy. Um, flew up to New Jersey for FD English Town, and then from there I went home to Massachusetts for about four or five days, and then drove back from Massachusetts to New Jersey the following weekend for another event, the Gambler event. And then I flew from Jersey again to Atlanta for the Drift HQ 4th of July event, which all of them were a ton of fun. It's been a hectic couple weeks, a stressful couple weeks, because uh, I am also in the process of trying to buy my first house. And I'm making some decent progress on that. I should have some information for you guys in the very near future. And maybe I can give you guys a tour of my new house. If everything goes right, fingers crossed. But this video is all about the century. And in the last video, I was talking to you guys about trying to get this thing a little bit lower and I just could not achieve that at that time. It's so fucking bright out. This concrete is like a mirror. There's nothing super, super wrong about the car's current height. It's just that the front is slightly higher than the rear when it's aired out and the car kind of sits a little bit like this. It's very, very subtle, but I know that once I do this mod, uh, it's going to change the look of the car quite a bit and it's gonna make me really, really happy. I gotta leave in like three days, four days for Ireland for the LZ World Tour, so I'm just trying to get this thing done before then so that I can just have peace of mind, know that it's all good to go. I also just dropped these on the website and they have not been in stock for a very long time, my license plate frames. The last time that I released these, I think was September of 2021. So it's been almost two years since these have been back on the website. I'm very, very stoked that they are back. And like I said, every single order on the site comes with a free random waving air freshener. So if you guys want a plate frame, if you guys want anything else on the website, every order comes with a free waving air freshener. And the support means a lot. Like I said, I'm in the middle of buying a house right now. So any additional support is always appreciated, but I'm gonna step into this hot box now cause I gotta bring this over to the shop and uh, we'll get started on it. Holy fucking shit, it is so hot in here. I almost don't even wanna leave cars parked outside uh, during the day. It's so hot down here right now. That's one thing that I've realized about Florida compared to living in Massachusetts. The heat during the day in the summer down here is so much more brutal than uh, the heat in the summer up north. It's different, like the humidity, it, it's like you could bend a saltine cracker in half and it wouldn't break. That's like how it feels down here. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it, but let's get this thing over to the shop and we can get started on this. I'm curious to know if this is gonna change my alignment at all. I would imagine it might tweak it a little bit. It'd be nice to be able to do this mod and just drop this thing back down and continue driving it because I enjoy driving this thing. I drive it pretty much every single day. And it's just a good rig, you know? A good rig that's about to look even better than it already does now, which to me and to some of you, that might not sound like something that's possible to do because this car turned out so fucking good. And I just cannot stop staring at it every single time that I park it anywhere. I'm just fully in love with this car. done a ton of ads in my videos recently and that's just because I've been super busy but this ad is something that I'm extremely pumped about because it's something I'm gonna be using pretty much every single day until the foreseeable future and that is the sponsor of today's video FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot is a high quality desk that lets you adjust the height electronically for whether you want to work while you're sitting or standing. Now I've wanted a standing desk for a while. Back in the day I had some back issues while snowboarding so sitting for long periods of time can start to hurt my back. So a standing desk comes into play very much for me. The FlexiSpot standing desk has four adjustments, two uh, manual adjustments where you can raise and lower it yourself and they also have two presets, one for standing or one for sitting that you can just preset to the height that you want and then when you need to you can just press a button. They're extremely extremely durable, they can hold a ton of weight as you can see in this video here. I sat on this thing no problem, lifted me up and down. The motors in these desks are really really strong, high quality, they'll last forever. And between the desk and the frame itself there's actually rubber mounts so when you're typing and doing things on this desk 
Vibration is minimum. Packing orders and editing is going to be a breeze for me now, and I'm extremely pumped to have a standing desk again. FlexiSpot standing desks are affordable, high quality, and if you click the link in the description right now, you can take advantage of their sale going on, which is 10% off by using my code DIVINE on any order over $500. I'm extremely happy to have one of these back in my life. Thank you, FlexiSpot, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, so in the last video, you guys saw me try and install those roll center adjusters from Megan Racing onto the front end of the Century, just to try and get it another 20, 30 millimeters lower uh, when the car airs out. Now, because this car has an upper A-arm suspension design, just like an LS400 and pretty much every single JDM 90s car, um, when you lower them, all the suspension rises and goes up into the strut tower. So. This car, when it airs out on the ground, the upper control arms actually bottom out and they hit the inside of the strut tower, preventing this thing from going any lower than it already can. Now installing those Megan Racing roll center adjusters would have effectively pushed the entire mounting surface of the wheel up 30 millimeters, which would lower the car 30 millimeters, but because this is already bottoming out in the strut tower, it's not allowing it to do so. So my project for this video is to get this thing up in the air, take the knuckles out of the front of this car and get them shortened. If you guys remember three years ago, when I first met Marco, when I first moved down here to Florida and I was building the LS400, this was one of the things that I had done to that car and Marco helped me do it. I'll overlay some pictures on the screen and some videos from that video on the screen, but it's a pretty lengthy process. You gotta take the knuckles out, you gotta cut them exactly where you want them, you gotta take material away, you gotta make sure that it's reinforced and strong when you go and weld it back together because you don't want this to fail, you want it to last and be just as strong, if not stronger than stock because if your knuckle snaps, you're not gonna have a good time. So I'm gonna get this thing jacked up in the air and once I have the front wheels off, I'll explain a little bit more in depth as to what the whole purpose of this is. All right, we're back in here. So, like I said, in the previous video uh, with these Megan Roll Center adjusters that I tried to put in, uh, they did not work because this guy, this upper control arm here, when the car airs out, it rests up in there and uh, bottoms out inside the strut tower. So the entire purpose behind this video is to shorten my knuckles or shorten my spindle. That's what this piece here is called. Um, basically, if you take material out of this, it's gonna lower the resting point for the upper so that it has more clearance up top when you go low, allowing you to go lower. <laughs> this is a big mod for people that are static, people that have coilovers and run cars on coils super, super low, but it does have the same application for guys on air suspension like me. So I've done this to the LS400. I've done this to Civics, Del Sol's. I've done this quite a bit. And thankfully this knuckle setup is identical to an LS400. So this is easy, it's cake. I already know exactly what I need to do. So I'm gonna start getting this taken apart and then I'll show you guys. It's very easy. It should be the same application for most cars. Unbolt the caliper, set that off to the side. Unbolt your upper A arm, hit it with a hammer, knock the ball joint loose unbolt the tie rod and then the mounting points at the bottom and the entire knuckle will come right out of the car and uh, we can get to work on it. I'm really trying to avoid whacking my fender so I'm just trying to play it careful. They will come loose. Just take some finesse. There we go. All right, so speed sensor had to come out of the knuckle. Uh, caliper had to come off the knuckle. The wiring harness for the caliper had to get taken off of the knuckle. The upper A-arm nut had to get disconnected, whacked, removed. Uh, the tie rod had to get disconnected and the two bolts that hold the knuckle to the lower control arm Had to get disconnected. It sounds like a lot, but I'll check the recording because I just recorded that 
Um, probably took me all of nine minutes, nine, 10 minutes to take off. Boy, not too bad. All right, knuckle is removed. I got the caliper resting on a box and uh, was pretty straightforward. Here's the knuckle, the whole assembly. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna cut here and we're gonna take material out and then weld it back together and reinforce it, make sure it's strong. And uh, by doing that, it will get me the final height that I need for this car to sit properly. It's a pain in the ass job. It's, you know, tedious. You gotta be precise with stuff and you gotta be kind of dedicated if you really wanna be low like this. Um, thankfully though, in terms of the welding, I got Cricut right across over here. And uh, once I get the other side off, I'm gonna pop over there and he's going to tackle the cutting, welding, beveling, reinforcing, all the stuff that's needed to get this done, which I will document, because it is a cool process. Both knuckles are out, so let's go take these over to Cricut and uh, get a game plan set up for how we're gonna slice these boys up. Flying big puddles. It, it definitely looks pretty, but it could change. It's not out here at the Drift HQ shop, got Cricket so over here, ready to weld up these. I know. It probably looks pretty cool, uh, or it looks really bad. Right He's gonna get these bad boys all cut up. Watching the video back that I did with Marco three years ago, we basically just took the square out, maybe a little bit more than the square. No, I'm gonna do the fat side of it because it looks like it's tapered. So if Marco cut more than that, I'm gonna do at least where the fattest nub is and take yeah. out about an inch. Okay. That sound good. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll bevel it. We'll keep probably a quarter inch of the inside of it square. That way it matches up square and we have the right angle. And then we'll bevel all the other sides around it. I'll do like four passes. So it'll be a multi-pass and keep going around it and around it until it fills up to be even again. Mm -hmm. And you'll just have your nice little beads around it. Won't grind it, won't do anything. You just paint over it because everybody knows you don't grind well. Yeah. Exactly. Don't grind well, especially structural wet. No. So I'm going to take the old chopo right here, this guy, and just do it real quick. No going back now, buddy. No. Nope. No going back now. It either works or I'm fucked. <laughs> So that's effectively how much lower the car will be. Well, that just makes it so it doesn't hit the, exactly. the frame rails, right? Or the rails on it? Exactly. So when I air out, right now the uppers bottom out in the strut tower. Oh, so, so by this, removing this, it'll give it that much more clearance to go that much lower before it bottoms out again. So it's still going to bottom out? Probably. Either that or it'll hit like the fender frame first. Okay. But I'm pretty sure it'll bottom See, out. There again. isn't like a spot where it just like stops and says this is good. That or will be this, the fender frame. This is this is the thing that bottoms right, out and so says that, it's good. That, that, yeah. Okay. Pretty much. I've done it the getaway before where you cut a hole in your strut tower and let I've the I've seen that. It looks like garbage, it's super sketch. It's really stancy stuff. Yeah. That was that was Del Sol Mike. Circa twenty uh, twenty fourteen. Yeah. With the rust look going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're not doing that. No. We we've graduated from that. So that's pretty much all this is. We're basically just cutting it in half, taking away material, and then welding it back together. But you can see he put bevels on it so that he can lay weld in multiple times and get it really, really strong. So do it on both sides. Nice flat points. And let's see which way. Look at that. Sit something like that. Should be good to go. Yep. It's gonna be real nice. And then just do 15 passes and we're gonna be good. <laughs> I owe stuff. you a case of beer for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cold beer. Yup.
Cricket knocked these out of the park. They look phenomenal. Nice, nice, deep, hot welds. I don't know a whole lot about welding, but he was teaching me quite a bit while he was doing it, shooting it as high of an amperage as he can go, just so that he can penetrate all the way in there, because this is a lot of material that he's laying in here. But he's extremely confident that neither of these will have any issues, and uh, I am too. You freaking killed it, dude. Hey, thanks. Thanks, dude. And I'm teaching Joel how to weld. I, I saw that walking in. Thank you. No problem. I'll slap some paint on these when they cool down, get them back in the car. Yeah, definitely put paint on it. Don't put crusty shit in your car. Yeah, pocket. no, for sure. Bring it sexy back. <laughs> okay, so we are back, and uh, it's the next day. I let these things just cool off on their own, and I just threw a fresh uh, coat of black paint on them, so these guys are ready to go back in the car. I also still have the Megan Racing RCAs that I'm gonna put in at the same time, and uh, you guys already saw me take all of this apart and you saw me put the RCAs on in the last video. So I'm just gonna bust through this, get these slapped back on here. Hopefully it doesn't mess up my alignment too, too bad. We tried to keep everything as straight as possible as it was. Uh, so I'm just gonna slap this stuff back in and then we get to set the car down on the ground and see actually how low this thing can go. Alright, car is back on the ground and everything is looking to be good to go. What I didn't show on video is the fact that I had to take these out probably a good six or seven times uh, and have them welded again once or twice uh, just because it's a trial and error kind of thing and you go, you weld it, you put it back together, you realize you should have welded it a little shorter, you should have welded it at a different angle. Initially I thought that since the fitment in the beginning was really, really close to just tucking in already that I wouldn't need to angle these at all uh, because I wouldn't need any additional camber. So the first go around, we just shortened them, I put them back in the car and lo and behold, it was still too tight, so I still needed some camber. I was gonna adjust the lower control arms, but those don't really give you camber adjustment for fitment. It just kind of pushes the bottom of the wheel out more. So I couldn't do that. So I took the knuckles out again for the second time, brought them over, and then we angled them. Thankfully, I know a lot of people that do this basically for a living, and I was able to call up my friend Will. I'll leave his Instagram on the screen, low down Will. Um, he has a whole business of doing this modification for people, and you can actually pay him to do it, and he'll just send you a set. Um, which is cool, but I hit him up because I was just curious. I was like, what are we doing wrong? What do we need to fix? And he told me exactly what we needed to do because of where we cut them on the arm uh, to like not too high up, but where we cut them a little doesn't go a long way. So we needed to do a little bit more angling than we thought uh, for it to translate to what we needed to. And now we're here, cars back on the ground and everything looks like it'll clear. I'm gonna air this thing down for the first time and we're gonna see what the new fitment is like with the notched and angled spindles in the front of this car. Quite a headache, I've been filming this video over the course of two weeks now, including the trip to Ireland, so I'm definitely excited to see this thing finish, but I'm also equally as excited to finish this video so that I can continue working on others. All right, so I also installed the RCAs as well. So it's notched spindles and angled spindles to give myself just two degrees more camber. I'm not going for any crazy camber shit. Uh, but then also adding those RCAs to the bottom to correct the, you know, control arm position. And we'll also get the front end to want to go another inch lower. So even though it won't clear it, it'll kind of force it to go that way. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, well I can tell the side skirt in the front is definitely sitting lower than it used to. Haven't seen it yet. Okay. Ooh! Fuck yeah. <laughs> God damn! Okay. <laughs> that, yeah, that's exactly what I was going for. Fuck! Yes. 
Perfect. That's fucking perfect. Can you even tell on camera? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell on camera. But look, front end now, tucks the front wheel, no problem. Clearance, good to go, as close as it'll get. Camber in the front on air out, matches the camber in the rear. God. We just take a moment to appreciate this big body, nice lady. <laughs> big ass scoop for a very nice lady. I'm stoked. This looks amazing. A lot of work and a lot of headache, but we got there and the thing is sitting perfectly. This is exactly what I was going for and I knew that in the beginning when I first put the air suspension on that I was going to have to do this. Um, same goes for any LS400. If you know what you're doing you can do it really really quickly but for me because I don't know how to weld and this is some trial and error stuff with new car, new fitment things, it took me a couple tries but we got it. Doesn't even look like the alignment is that far off which is awesome. I'll probably take it over and give it a toe plate alignment and uh, just make sure that it's Driving straight, steering wheel's still perfectly straight, so that's awesome. God, this thing is... It doesn't do it justice in here though because it's kind of cramped, so... I'm gonna pull this thing out and uh, we can see some final shots of this thing outside. I am a sweaty, sweaty mess, but the thing is done. At least the height of this car is done and it's set exactly how I wanted it to. God, it looks so fucking perfect. Now that the front end is not raking, the car is completely level. When I pulled the car out of the shop this morning, I brought it over here and gave it a tow plate alignment. Then I test drove it and brought some orders to the post office and came back. It was like slightly off, so I uh, toe plated it again. Now it's driving perfectly straight with, I think, zero toe, which is perfect. And that's also at my ride height, which now is actually much nicer because I put the RCAs in the front. So now ride height is still moderately high, but fitment's better. And now that all four wheels are tucking when the car's aired up, uh, there's no poke at all. So it looks very nice driving and parked. And I'm stoked about that. Those arms were a big pain in the ass, but I'm glad that they came together and they worked out. Seeing the front end tuck and uh, just match the rest of the vibe of the car, it's exactly what I was going for. The camber on air out is identical front and back as well, which is something that I crave and I love. I hate cars like the Del Sol in the very long past far ago time. Uh, front end had like four degrees of camber, rear had 15. Looks stupid. Over that, love this. This is exactly what my vibe of car is. I love this thing so much. I hope you guys do too, because I have some fire, fire shirts coming out very shortly about the century. 
been working on this design with Nuts Art. He's the homie behind the iconic LS400 design that I've released three years ago. So you already know it's gonna be a banger design and I'm very, very pumped to share it with you guys. Probably gonna wrap this video up here. I uh, took this thing to a car meet last night down in Oviedo and it was fun, but the car meet got really, really hectic and we ended up getting stuck out there for a while because it got super, super crowded, which is sick. Um, but we couldn't leave, so I didn't film anything from it, but the car made the journey, no issues there and back. Been driving it around all day today, running some errands, just grabbing groceries. Car drives, perfect, alignment's perfect. I couldn't be happier. Next up on this thing is exhaust, I believe. I have some very cool stuff for this thing that'll hopefully give it some grunt, let you guys hear the V12 a little bit. And then after that, just a couple little odds and ends here and there, nothing super crazy. I love the way this car came out i don't want to go overkill i think it looks pretty much perfect the way it does sorry for being absent for the past month on youtube i have had an extremely extremely busy past 30 days between traveling up north for two weeks had about five days here and then flew to ireland for a week and now i'm back so there just really hasn't been any time to film content uh, but there has been some cool stuff happening in the background and that regards my house. I do wanna make a future video revealing the house and walking around it and everything like that, but I'm in the closing period right now on my first house and I'm very, very excited about it. It's got pretty much everything that I need and I've been spending the past month and a half searching, looking at houses, putting in offers. I got this one, I'm approved and I will have my own place to stay very soon. It's been awesome living at the compound for the past two years. For those of you that didn't know that that's what I was doing. When I moved down to Florida, I stayed with Adam for a little while just to get comfortable. And then when we got the compound, it was a no brainer because this place has houses on it to just move in here. And it's been great. I've been able to get a bunch of work done late, just have to walk home. It's It's been really nice, but having my own spot now that I can customize and make my own is going to be so much fun. And I cannot wait for the future for that. Like I said, I'm gonna close this video out here and stop talking. I hope you guys enjoy the Century's new look, the final fitment, final finish. This thing came out absolutely perfect. Now it just needs an exhaust and some corner markers and little little stuff but thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video